Hello everyone, Monty here, and today's Monty Chat is about why it's important to detox yourself from sugar, artificial sweeteners, and other bad foods. So I've been going through my chats, because I'm putting all my chats on my website. Um, I've been doing chats for about five years. I've only decided to go back a year, and then I'm trying to see what kind of chats I'm missing um, out of all those chats over the five years. And I did talk about, uh, one of the other chats you may want to watch is why uh, most diets don't work. And what, you know, I always, usually always say that something happens during the day that gives me an idea to do a chat. And yesterday I did a live Instagram session with Anna Rockstar 23 and um, we um, talked about a whole bunch of stuff. And one question somebody asked was uh, detoxing from sugar and if they should do it slowly or go cold turkey. So here's my answer to that question. So I talk about detoxing from sugar and you know all bad food like fried food, artificial sweeteners. But obviously, you know you can't do everything at once. You can't you know rid. I'm a, I'm a pretty hardcore person, all or nothing type person, which is good in some ways and it's very bad in other ways. I'm all black and white. You know, there's no shades of gray in between, which can be a problem. But I think most people would be more successful first getting off you know the sugar, then maybe the artificial sweeteners, then maybe fried foods and all that other stuff. But, um, you know, they're, they're all really bad for you and you should have a goal of getting rid of all of them. And if you think you can take it on all at once, then sure, you know, do so. But one thing that I struggle with when people tell me, well, should I go off sugar slowly, is most people aren't tracking the grams of sugar. So how are you going to baseline how much sugar you were eating to set a plan for yourself week one, week two, week three? Now, if you are using a calorie counter or you are tracking the sugar grams a day, which I bet most of you aren't doing, um, then I would say go ahead and say, okay, this week I'm going to do, you know, a hundred, you know, maybe like, you know, less than a hundred grams of sugar a day. Uh, I think the average person in the country is eating like 150 grams of sugar a day, which is crazy, right? Then go down to, um, you know, maybe 75, then 50, then 25, and then maybe, you know, we're talking about refined sugars. Then, you know, maybe you want to play with natural sugars too to see, um, you know, how that affects your weight loss or your health as well. Um, I'm not really that too concerned about natural sugars, although I try not to eat natural sugars that are refined, like fruit juice, um, you know, because when fruit, when the, when the natural sugars don't have the fiber, it gets released into your bloodstream all at once. But when the fiber's there, it's like, a, it's like a time release. Not to say that you couldn't still gain weight from that natural sugar with the fiber, but it's a lot uh, more unlikely because the fiber fills you up. You'll probably stop eating before you get too much and it's a slow release and gives your body time to burn that sugar off before it converts it to fat. But, um, it's funny, people always ask me, you're always so good, what's your secret? And, you know, they're always waiting for this one magical thing that I do. And I used to always say, there is no one magical thing. But I would say there is one thing that could be considered a magical thing. And that is get detoxing your body from all the bad food. And here's why. Why do you think people don't succeed on a diet? Think about it for a moment. What do you think the number one reason is because they feel like they're deprived from all their favorite foods, right? And unfortunately, none of you grew up thinking, oh my boy, I can't wait to have some broccoli or an apple today. That is gonna be amazing. But I do, right? So for me, it's a combination of, I would say 90%. I have detoxed from all these bad foods and I don't crave them and I have no interest in them anymore. And I talk about this all the time. That I, first of all, I always say, anytime you're making any change in life, I always say that you know, a lot of my chats, even though I, I tailor them to all to weight loss, you can use some of these concepts in every area of your life. So anytime you're embarking on something new, whether it be weight loss, financial freedom, a, a job promotion, career advancement, education, ed, you know, educational pursuits, you always have to set yourself up for success. And the number one thing that you have to do is tell yourself it's gonna be hard. What I find is people always say, oh, I've got a New Year's resolution, I'm gonna lose all this weight, it's gonna be so great. And I'm always thinking, no, it's not gonna be great because when you're detoxing from all the bad food and you're dieting and you're trying to lose weight, it's gonna be really hard. And if you tell yourself it's going to be hard, you won't be disappointed when it is hard. And what happens is, 
People give up because they're not mentally prepared for the hard. And I love this expression I came up with. I said, choose your hard in life. It's really hard to go through detox for, like it could be anywhere, for, everybody's different, right? That's another thing to talk about, right? Your detox could be, you know, I, I would say probably not less than two weeks, probably, you know, three, four, five weeks, six weeks. It could be a couple of months for some people, but I'd say on average, three to six weeks would be the average of detox before you're not jonesing for that bad food anymore. And what happens during the time that you detox, so just, just remember, it's gonna be really hard. And um, when you're, you know, I, I'd say probably three to six, six weeks is the average person, I would say. So again, there's always gonna be outliers. Some people a couple of weeks, some people many more months than that. Um, but once you do that, you're, you're read out many articles that your taste buds regenerate every 21 days. So if you're going more than 21 days, without having fried foods, artificial sweeteners, sugar mostly, sugar's the big one, right? Because sugar is, I'll do a whole chat on sugar soon. I just realized I don't have one on my website right now. Um, and for those of you who don't know my website, it's www.happylifestyleliving.com. And then there's a drop down for Monty Chats, of videos, Monty Chats, and that's where all the Monty Chats are. And so, um, number one, people get disenfranchised. I talked about this a couple, a couple of my chats the last couple of days that everybody makes all these New Year's resolutions, they get all excited, and then by February 17th, I think it was like 80 something percent of all people have already given up all of their New Year's resolutions. And I think because people don't prepare themselves for how hard it's gonna be, they just go, looks like I'm gonna lose weight, it's the beginning of the year, yeah, 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 yeah. And then like, rah, rah, this was hard. I didn't realize how hard, oh, this is too hard. But if, I think if you prepare yourself that it's gonna be hard, it's gonna be a lot easier. So whether you are slowly backing off sugar and you're doing maybe one at a time. I got off artificial, I'll just tell you my journey. I got off artificial sweeteners years ago. I didn't get off sugar until like five years ago. Um, years and years ago, probably like 10 years ago because I read about all these things. I've got, you know, all these people drinking Diet Coke and they've got studies that's linked to MS and all the, it kills your flora, the artificial sweeteners, aspartame and all this other stuff. It kills your gut flora. Um, which is your microbiome, which is your immune system and kills your ability, your metabolism. Everything's in your microbiome. You want to, may want to Google some articles on your microbiome. And, um, you know, so all that artificial sweeteners, and, we, and, and, and Anna and I were talking about this yesterday, it all just clogs up your whole system. It's, you know, it starts giving you skin problems, your gut problems. Artificial sweeteners are horrible. And I talked about stevia. People say, well, isn't stevia great? Yeah, if you're grinding up the stevia leaf and pouring it into your food, go for it. But they process stevia, I'm not, I'm not saying 100% of stevia, but almost the stevia, I read about articles, they process it with toxic chemicals so it's bad for you, right? Just like any other artificial sweetener. Um, so again, uh, you really, really have to, um, you know, start thinking about why have I not been successful before? It's because you feel deprived because you're not getting the foods that you love. now. I believe you can change this because I always go back to, if you don't drink coffee and if you don't drink alcohol, this probably won't make a lot of sense to you, but I think most of us do drink one or the other. But when I was a kid and I um, was so tired in the morning for school, I, I drank a cup of coffee like it's like 15, if it's the first time I had coffee, maybe a little younger, and it gave me such a buzz. I was like, oh, I love this stuff, but it tastes, the first time I drank it, I was like, oh, this tastes like crap. You know, and then what do we do? We put all the sugar and cream in it. I drink it black now. I love my coffee black I got, because I got used to it. And then also alcohol. The first time I drank alcohol, I thought it was disgusting. I got sick. I threw up. I swear I would never do it again. But you know why? Because we like the being buzzed, whether it's the buzz from the alcohol, the buzz from the coffee, you know, so we kept going back until we acquired a taste for it. But think about it. You probably hated coffee. You hated alcohol. I crave alcohol. You know, so I used that also when I read that um, tequila burns fat. Something about when they take the agave and they distill it, it helps burn fat. And because liquor has no carbs, I started drinking, you know, liquor years ago when I started dieting and I would drink, you know, vodka soda. And then I moved to tequila and I used to hate tequila. I thought it was the most disgusting thing in the world. I said, but it burns fat, I'm going to drink it. And then um, I started loving it. So it's, you can grow accustomed to a certain type of food. And the reason why you love a certain type of food is because you that's what you were brought up with, that's what you're exposed to, and now we want everything with sugar because 80% of everything in the supermarket has sugar. But why do most people never get to that point where they start craving healthy food like I do? 
is because they don't give it enough time. I always talk about this. You know, it's, it was brutally torturous. I'm going to be honest with you. For like three or four weeks, all I was jonesing for was the sugar and all this bad food. But then once I started, um, you know, got past that three or four weeks, I remember like eating a salad going, oh my God, these greens taste sweet. Or like, you know, a peach or a pear was so sweet. And I was like, I started craving fruits and vegetables. And I got so excited when I had my little mixed fruit that I would make. And um, so I think the reason why most people fail on diets because they're, they're still chasing, what I call chasing the sweet, they're chasing the sugar, they're chasing their favorite foods. And they're thinking every time they look down at their plate, they're feeling like they're deprived because they, they still got their eye on the prize, that food that they think tastes so good. And that's gonna go on. It's like you're a hamster on a, on a, on a hamster wheel, you know? And it's just gonna, that's gonna keep going and going and going. And that's why I don't believe in cheat days, right? Because, or cheat, you know, cheat meals. Because basically, what you're doing is you're saying, oh, but Sunday I get to eat whatever I want, I get to eat all that bad food, and then all week long I'm like, oh, look at this food that I have on my plate, this boring stuff. And that's why I've always made an effort. When I got off sugar, I knew it was gonna be hard, and I talked to myself, and I told myself it was gonna be hard. And so what I did is I focused on making the food flavorful and beautiful. So when I looked down at my plate, I would say, oh my God, because people would say, oh my God, you're, you're, oh, I can't believe you're suffering like that. I can't believe the way you're eating. I say, I say, look at this food. Look at what I post. This is how I eat. I have a luxurious food lifestyle. I eat better than most people and more, you know, beautiful, gorgeous, you know, gourmet food than anyone. How could somebody say that? So again, I can't stress enough how important it is to go through a detox and purge yourself from all these foods because I really firmly believe until you purge yourself from all the bad foods and then retrain your taste buds, I talk about this, your taste buds regenerate and if your food is, you're getting used to this, you know, good healthy food, you won't crave any of that bad food anymore and I, and I talked about this yesterday and I always talk about this experience where I was off of sugar, when I first got off of sugar like five, six years ago and I went into a Starbucks to get an unsweetened green iced tea and they put sugar in it and they put so much sugar in this iced tea, it's crazy, right? All these places and sweet tea. And I'm running, so I'm always I'm running out the door and I'm at the patio and I decide to take a sip. And I remember it was like battery acid. It was so vile, the sweetness, I couldn't, it was like so disgusting. I couldn't swallow it, I spit it out. It was like, it was like just an automatic response all over like the patio. I almost spit it on people. People look at me like I'm nuts. What the hell's wrong with this guy? And I was like, Ugh. I was like wiping my tongue with a napkin. I, I mean, literally, that's how bad it tasted to me. And it just goes to show you how your taste buds can change. I can't eat anything that's sickeningly sweet anymore. If something has more than like five grams of sugar, it's too sweet for me. And I have a couple of my products that I do eat that have sugar, but I limit it to a very few products. My Roland Glaze has like three grams of sugar. My my. Chicken bacon has two or three grams. The chocolate PB2 has four grams. And I think that's about it. Pretty much I don't eat anything with refined sugar. And um, so again, if you wanna break the cycle of you know just not being successful on your diet and you haven't tried detoxing yourself from all these foods, you know, I would urge you to because it was life changing for me and I didn't realize, and even though I'm, I'm like 10, 12 pounds heavier than I wanna be right now, um, and that's because of eating too many calories. So that's another thing I want to talk about, and I talk about this all the time. You can still eat clean and no sugar and still eat too many calories and gain weight, even when you're eating as clean as possible. It's all about calories in, calories burned. But we're running out of time. So I would say for the new year, if there's one thing, if there is one magic thing you want to do for yourself, it's to detox from sugar, artificial sweeteners, and focus more on whole natural foods and, and retrain your taste buds. When you detox uh, from those foods, you will retrain your taste buds, you'll start craving good foods, and I believe that is the only time you will be successful on your new healthy diet regime.